Do you want to be healthier, yet you just don't know what to do? All these shows telling you this and that, but nothing seems to work. Well, listen close. Golden State Media Concepts has got something great for you. The health and wellness podcast dedicated to workout trends, healthy eating habits, diet, and everything about healthy living. Join us in our banters as we help you not just live life to the fullest, but live it to the healthiest. Welcome to the GSMC Health and Wellness Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Heidi, and I'm joined by the always wonderful Sarah. Hello. Well, Sarah, we are talking about a very cheery topic. We are talking about the flu. Woohoo! It's so super cheery. exciting. Yes. It's flu season, which is not nearly as popular as other seasons, like football season or boot season. I love boot season. Always a fun time. I personally enjoy it, as does my wardrobe. Uh, there's also open season and mate- mating season, and, <laughs> and now flu season. <laughs> hmm. We're, I guess we're overlapping with boot season, you perhaps. Know, I'm not even a football fan, and I prefer football season to flu season. I prefer basically all seasons over flu season. Did, did you get a flu <laughs> shot? I did not. I have a, I mean, I feel like we've mentioned it. I have a thing with needles. Oh, yeah. So if I don't have to get the shot, I... Will not. And I didn't get the flu, so now I feel justified. But it's, it's, <laughs> it's still, still going on. Season. I know. Still get it. Not that I'm trying to jinx you. Jeez, that sounds terrible. You can still get it. <laughs> I'm definitely not going to get it. Um, but we will learn that there is the flu shot, and then you can get, like, the other flu vaccine where you, like, inhale it through your nose. Yes. Like, a, like I yes. don't know, nasal spray, which I would get. I would get that one, but I will not get the shot unless I'm, like, until I'm like 60, basically, okay. is my plan. Okay. I have respiratory issues, so I get it every year. Yeah. No, the flu shot is a good idea, unless you're like me who decided to not. <laughs> but I did get the flu last year, so it wasn't fun. And, At least I had mild flu. I wasn't like dying, but and it wasn't great. Can I just jump in here and say, when we we're talking about the flu, we're not talking about the stomach flu. People often talk about the flu, oh, and yes. they talk about the stomach flu. They're not the same thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. Stomach flu is not the flu. It is a bug, you know, a stomach bug. Mm-hmm. The flu that we are talking about the, that you get the shot for, I hate it when people get a stomach bug, and then they bitch because, oh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> they complain because I got my flu shot. Oh, it doesn't yes. cover stomach viruses. We will be talking about that because I do feel like that is a very, very common misconception and I distinctly remember in my childhood getting the stomach flu. That is a very, that is a memory that is really imprinted oh, on my yeah. brain yeah, it stays <laughs> because it you. was terrible. As does whatever you threw up that oh. you can't eat for yeah. a while. No, it's bad. Um, but we will talk about that. But yes, that is very true. And that's very important. We're talking about influenza, not the stomach flu. Yes. Which again, the stomach flu has a different name because it's not really the flu. Right. But they're sort of related. You both feel bad. <laughs> when you have both of them, you feel terrible. <laughs> oh, and I hope you don't get both of them at once. That would be horrible. Oh, gosh. I mean, they can cross a little bit with symptoms. So it's kind of like the flu sometimes. Anyway, Anywho. we will discuss it. Um, but yes, I want to say we are talking about the flu, which is influenza. And I want to start by saying what it is so we're not getting confused. Um, the flu is a contagious respiratory illness. It's caused by, in, by influenza, influenza A, B, and C. Those are all viruses. And it appears most frequently in winter and early spring, hence where we are now uh, in the month of February, which is cold and dreary. And now you get to also have the flu mm-hmm. during the cold months. <laughs> Lucky you. Yeah, so exciting. Um, there are a hundred different viruses that can cause a cold, but only the influenza viruses can cause the flu. So, I mean, I feel like when we say like, oh, it's the common cold, that is very common because there are so many different types of viruses for the cold. Influenza only has three. Yes. And, um, the flu virus attacks the body. It spreads throughout the upper and lower respiratory tract, which is why I feel like when you have the flu, you have like terrible, like coughing, Mm -hmm. um, like nasal congestion. It's it's really not great. Your throat hurts. Um, also, you can get like headache, 
or just chest discomfort, which I have not had before, but sounds awful. Um, I, oh gosh. Yeah. The nasal things and all the respiratory illnesses are really not fun. (laughs) Um, also with the flu, you're likely to run a high fever for several days. You can have body aches, fatigue, and weakness, which is also the worst. Which is the flu like symptoms that you you read that everything seems to have. Yeah. Like like every, every medication says that. (laughs) And that's what it means because if you've just had a cold, you might not really understand what the flu is because it's like the cold symptoms plus weakness achiness fever general right. worse feeling <laughs> yeah like i feel like with a cold you can kind of function i feel like with the flu you really can't mm-hmm. and you really shouldn't which i will I'll touch on later but really you should just rest up and you don't want to spread it to others because yeah. it's not a fun thing to it's not like the kind of thing you want to share it's not and a they gift might be like heidi and they didn't get their flu shot so you, know, you never know it. exactly um Let's see. Also, usually complications from colds are relatively minor. Um, A case of the flu, it can possibly lead to life-threatening illnesses such as pneumonia. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit more serious and it should definitely be taken seriously. Especially because you know, I mean, if you didn't know before, you know now you're in flu season. So if you're feeling kind of crummy and it's not just a cold, like maybe it's lingering, it's not going away, and you feel worse, you could have the flu, and it could become pneumonia. So you should really take care of yourself. Yes. And again, pneumonia is terrible. So people <laughs> die from it. Just beware. Yeah. <laughs> not saying you're going to die, but you know. You things don't could happen. want to take that risk. Yeah, it's not good. Okay, so with the flu, I want to talk about the spread of it and how it... It's kind of gross and <laughs> gets passed on. <laughs> it's gross because it's a sickness. It's, yeah. Um, okay, so new strains of the flu evolve every few years. And um, that's like because, I mean, well, also related to that, the flu is a virus. So you should know antibiotics are not going to conquer the cold or the flu. Um, antibiotics are helpful because they treat bacteria obviously antibiotics uh so it's not going to treat anything that's viral so just because you have the flu doesn't mean you should be taking antibiotics don't go to your doctor asking for them because they will generally not be helpful however antibiotics can be helpful only if there is a secondary bacterial infection related to having the flu Mm -hmm. so the main cause of your flu will not be treated by antibiotics right and also you shouldn't take antibiotics all the time because you don't want to get a resistance to it in your body exactly but i feel like you know you should still go to your doctor even if you're not going to get antibiotics they may be able to give you something for the respiratory issues yes. maybe that's cough syrup maybe that's an inhaler um, there are still things that can be done just might not be antibiotics yes very true um touching on that there are two antiviral medications that are available to treat the flu Um, There are no medications that specifically defeat, like, the common cold, and there aren't really any that I would say will specifically get rid of the virus or the flu, but you can take medications to help lessen your your symptoms. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how to spread. The flu is spread when you inhale droplets in the air that contain the flu virus, which... When I had the flu, I just think about how gross it is that I inhaled, like, <laughs> droplets in the air that which had the you, virus. Which you do every single day. You know, every moment of the day you're inhaling something. True. But, I am probably just... inhaling your droplets that are in the air as you yeah, speak. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> and I'm inhaling yours. Oh, it's a, oh, it's a fun party. But wow. Yeah, we're inhaling stuff all the time. We just don't think about it. It's when we actually think about it that's really gross. Yeah, like how I am now. Yeah. Um, also, if you make direct contact with, this is a great phrase, respiratory secretions mm. <laughs> through like sharing drinks, utensils, just other things like that. Um, or if you're handling items contaminated by an infected person. So if like someone's like not coughing into their elbow, which you should, and they're coughing into their hand and like touching doorknobs mm-hmm. or just any other, I feel like common item around like going on the bus touching doors touching i don't know touching your shoulder (laughs) shaking your hand anything like that um if that's coming into contact and then maybe you're like touching your mouth then or rubbing your eyes something like that Mm -hmm. all of that is generally going to spread the flu which again flu season so people might be sick and not really be taking care of themselves so that's kind of just out there (laughs) Yep. everywhere which is a good reminder to wash your hands and wash your hands often which is a great way to try and prevent the flu also i feel like if you have the flu cough into your elbow like you always should really, when you yeah. cough 
And if you have the flu, try and wash your hands. You this know. is making me want to cough. Like I feel like I need to cough. Oh right no, now. <laughs> I don't have the flu. Um, okay, good, good. I don't want to inhale hail your air droplets. Yeah, yeah. And I had the shot, and okay, I don't feel right. sick. I just right. really feel like I need to cough. <laughs> it's like when you talk about yawning or sneezing. Exactly. Yeah, it gets passed. Yep. Um, also, while anyone can get the flu. Infants, the elderly, pregnant women, and people with chronic ailments, such as diabetes, heart disease, lung disease, and HIV, are at the highest risk for flu complications. So I also like to see this is partially my excuse for not getting the vaccine. Like, I'm not in any of these categories, so clearly I'll be fine. But (laughs) I mean, I shouldn't think that because then if I got it and then I could pass it. Also, I want to say I'm not an anti-vaxxer. I just happen to not get the flu shot. But I'm not suggesting that for anyone out there. (laughs) Not at all. (laughs) Um, And I want to say, despite advances in flu prevention and treatment, uh, the CDC estimates that deaths related to influenza range from 3,000 to 49,000 deaths in the United States each year. Which is a to 49? Yeah, that's That's a a huge huge range. That's the CDC for you. Wow. (laughs) But I think also some of that range and vary is because you can get it like evolves each year. So it's not just the same. Right. And also the vaccine is not always effective. Like it varies in effectiveness. Yeah. Which I mean, again, we will kind mention. Of, it's kind of like prognostication where they're trying to figure out what strain it's going to be this year. I mean, they've got, I don't know how that works exactly. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to say like they're guessing, but they're sort of like trying their best to anticipate yes. how it's going to be as they're developing it to get prepared for flu season. Um, and we're going to take a quick break, but I just want to hint, we're going to be talking about stomach flu because it has flu in the name. And although it is not the same, I think that everyone should still know about it because I want to do some myth busting in Ooh, case you were wondering. Nice. <laughs> so we're going to take a quick break and then we'll come back and talk about stomach flu. Still on the search of that one true love on the limbo in this crazy world of dating marriage relationships well listen to the golden state media concepts relationship podcast your one-stop podcast for everything about relationships Welcome back to the GSMC Health and Wellness Podcast. Well, as I hinted, we we're talking about the stomach flu. <laughs> so exciting. It's such a cheery, cheery episode. I just feel like I want to talk about it because it's something that has deeply impacted the memory of my childhood. So, and really my entire family's. Yeah. Okay, so. Oh, yes. Well, no, I was just thinking the last time I went home to my hometown, mm-hmm. um, my youngest niece had the stomach flu and she was oh. hurling and horrible oh, and, yeah. and right before her sister's birthday oh. and then the entire family yep. sister nieces brother his kids my parents me we all got it like pretty much yep. at the exact same time <laughs> yep. i think i think my dad was the only one who didn't get it oh wow my dad and one niece wow yeah we all did they just like run away and avoid you all <laughs> no they were right there with us but yes yeah, so it was like three different houses oh god <laughs> so that that just came back to my memory i think i blocked it for a while it really it sticks with you yeah um so stomach flu i want to say stomach flu is a popular term it's not really a medical diagnosis which threw me off for a while because i looked up the stomach flu in the past and i just thought like maybe it's not a real thing you know like maybe it's just other sicknesses But it is a real thing. It's just that what we often call it is more of like a colloquial term. It's not a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. So even if your doctor might say you have stomach flu, that's not technically what it's called. Um, Also, again, if you're getting a flu shot, it's protecting against influenza, not the stomach flu. Um, Okay, so stomach flu. I'm going to try and say this. It's gastroenteritis. I think that's pretty close. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense because gastro, like your stomach. Yeah. Um, And... 
it's a viral infection, or sorry, the flu is a viral infection, but gastroenteritis refers to inflammation or ir- irritation of the gastrointestinal tract. That seems so mundane sounding for what it actually it does. is. Yeah. Inflammation or irritation. N- no, it's, it's not irritation. <laughs> it's like intense it's, it's, <laughs> irritation. Yeah. Yeah. So it affects your stomach and your intestines. And um, it can range from bacteria, virus, also like parasites, food reactions, unclean water. It's more general than just the influenza flu. Mm -hmm. Um, And apparently viruses cause close to half of all the stomach flu cases in adults and even more in children. So it has a little more vary of what causes it, um, not just like virus A, B, or C. Um, Also with gastroenteritis, you have symptoms such as abdominal cramps, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Mm -hmm. Why it's so memorable. (laughs) You could also have fever, headache, uh, swollen lymph glands. It kind of depends on the type of germ that causes it. And I feel like this is sometimes why it's confused with flu, because you can't get symptoms like, like fever, headache, soreness, and like other things that relate to having the flu. Although I feel like... It, they they could be like flu like aches, but I feel like most of those aches, like the headache and your your abs hurt because you're throwing up yeah, all the time. Your true. head probably hurts because you haven't held anything down for two days. Right, you're just dehydrated. <laughs> you know? You're dehydrated. Your head hurts and and throwing up make you you know I'm sure does not help a headache. No, not at all. I yeah, ugh. I remember getting it as a child and I had never been that sick, and I just remember like how terrible it was. I was like shocked by how sick you could be. Yeah. <laughs> um. So in severe cases, which can happen, there can apparently be days of throwing up um, or having diarrhea or sadly both. Mm -hmm. And uh, they can cause your body to lose a lot of moisture. And if you lose too much, you may need medical attention. It can sometimes be life threatening. Again, probably if you're in like, you know, like really young children or the elderly, it can be life threatening due to losing a lot of your body's hydration it's not good because sometimes when you're so sick you can't even hold down water Mm -hmm. so it can be rough and if you're in that type of situation definitely go see a doctor or probably have someone else take you to go see the doctor you may need some help with hydration yeah probably um also as we've mentioned stomach viruses can really spread fast a lot of times they spread because people don't wash their hands um, particularly after using the bathroom or for cha- like changing a baby's diaper, things mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, which, wash your hands. Come yeah, on, folks. please do. Um, also, which relates to what Sarah was talking about. Many doctors call stomach flu a family affair, <laughs> <laughs> really which is. is because it's so highly contagious. It can affect like one member of the family and then just spread to everyone else. Uh, it, no matter how careful you all are being with hand. I mean, the, it, it, it's just yeah. in the air at that point and you're all living together in the. Yeah. You yeah. never know. I mean, if something's not even like completely properly cleaned, like a sink or whatever, it's just, it spreads so easily. It's not fun. I remember that definitely happened to me. It happened to me like around Thanksgiving and then just everyone in my family got it and it was just a Thanksgiving to remember, That's, really. Yeah, ours was uh, ours was right around Thanksgiving as well. Yeah, which is a bad time because you're all making food. It's, oh, it's rough. Okay, so we're going back to influenza, back to the flu, not stomach flu. <laughs> The real flu. The real flu. <laughs> I know you're all excited to get back to the real flu. <laughs> you were like, come on, get back to the real flu. <laughs> Enough just lollygagging around. <laughs> okay, so I do want to mention an interesting fact. Most influenza viruses that infect humans seem to originate in parts of Asia, where close contact between livestock and people create a hospitable environment for mutation and transmission of the virus. Hmm. Apparently, swine or pigs can catch uh, both avian flu uh, and human flu of a virus that acts, and they can like be a host really for different viral strains, um, which is not good if people like take care of pigs and things like that. Swine can transmit new forms of the virus to people uh, in a way in which then you know people go on and infect each other, and that can really transmit the virus. So or be the beginning of an ap- apocalyptic uh, movie or television right. series. Yeah, it just causes terrible zombie apocalyptic situations (laughs) that's a different podcast uh yeah well that uh, that was interesting to me to learn that pigs can also have it i mean there is like bird flu and things like that Mm -hmm. but that the pigs can take in like an animal virus and then they can their bodies will mutate it into a virus that humans can have which is very frightening again very apocalyptic yeah um and so then of course from the pigs it's transmitted as the flu is like through droplets in the air and people can breathe it in 
Or other pigs breathe it in, <laughs> which is sad. Yeah. Okay. How wash to prevent pigs? Oh Sorry, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe the pigs should wash their hands. I don't know if there needs to be a PSA about that. Wash their hooves, I guess. Yeah. Or I guess, yeah, wash your pigs in general. <laughs> or at least if your pigs seem sick, maybe take care of them. Don't, I don't know, hang and out then with them. Wash your hands. A yes. Lot. Oh yeah. Also, if you work with pigs, you should probably really wash your hands. Although I have heard pigs are very clean. But anyway, <laughs> if they have the flu, it's just in the air at that point. <laughs> Okay, so how to prevent the flu. Uh, Specific strains of the flu can be prevented by a flu vaccine, either, again, as I said, shot or like nasal spray flu vaccine thing. Uh, In addition, there are antiviral medications. Um, Some of the drugs that are antiviral can help reduce the severity or the duration of the flu. And if you're going to take them, it's best to use them within the first 48 hours of the appearance of flu symptoms. Also, um, even if you develop antibodies against a flu virus one year, those antibodies antibodies are unlikely to protect you against a new strain of the flu virus the next year. Because, right. again, it changes, mm-hmm. which is also scary to think that I almost feel like the virus is like outsmarting us, you know, like trying to take over the human race by continually evolving which frightens me quite a lot. Also, yeah. I always remember in my biology textbooks, the little picture of a virus, which looks like sinister to yeah, me. It does. It's with this little like weird legs and little like, or whatever they are. Yeah, yeah it's, it's got... actually scary looking. Mm-hmm. And I don't like thinking that I am breathing that in the air and having it in my body, like, I don't know, replicating itself. It frightens me quite a lot. It's but, definitely science fiction. Well, yeah. except that it's science, <laughs> it's, yeah, not it's fiction. <laughs> real life. <laughs> But the the pig flu zombie virus is definitely a bit more in the fiction realm. But, you know, you never know. Yeah, hopefully. (laughs) Okay. Also, um, the influenza, I guess, I don't know. I feel like if I'm talking about how the flu is spread, I want to mention the vaccine. Uh, The 2019 vaccine in particular Influenza activity has picked up recently because it's flu season. Apparently, right now, we're in peak flu season, Mm. which is strange. Um, But the good news is this season's flu is definitely milder than last year. And that is according to the CDC, which, if you don't know, is Center for Disease Control and Prevention. Also, according to the CDC, the flu is now widespread, 48 states and Puerto Rico. What are the two states that don't have it? Can I go I, there? I know. I don't know. How are they not getting it? Yeah. <laughs> I guess maybe they all got the vaccine. Is it I'm not Hawaii sure. and Alaska? Because they're, I oh. mean, Puerto Rico is not connected either. But Yeah. I mean, maybe. I don't know. Mm. That could make sense. Uh, since October 1st in 2018, there's been up to 20.4 million reported cases of the flu. Uh, between 8.2 and 9.6 million flu-related medical visits, uh, 214,000 to 256,000 hospitalizations, and not good, um, <laughs> 13,000 to 22,000. Uh, well, I feel like that's wrong, but there have been reported deaths related to the flu, mm. which is not good and yeah. sad. But again, I feel like there are very vulnerable populations yep. that should definitely be vaccinated. Uh, also, unfortunately, there have been seven pediatric deaths hmm. that were reported related to the virus, which is sad. Um, okay. Also, oh, that was just last week. Oh, yes. The seven pediatric deaths were, I guess, last week. And oh, this is sad. Uh, that brings the total flu related deaths in children to 41 hmm. for that for this year, which is sad, or at least for this flu season. Right. Still sad. Yeah. Regardless. Very sad. Uh, Okay, also to mention, some experts are attributing the calmer flu season to the effectiveness of this year's vaccine. Good job, vaccine makers. So that's good news. And it's also more effective than last year's vaccine. Uh, Also, for children up to 17 years, the vaccine is estimated to be 61% effective, which is good. And approximately 24% of adults ages 50 and over have been protected by the shot. Meaning they got it? Um, I would assume meaning they got it. I don't know if that means that that's how many have not gotten the flu. Mm. I'm not sure. That's a little bit of a confusing statistic. Yeah. But um, it is good to know that these populations are getting the vaccine and that it's seemingly effective. Uh, Also, if you didn't know, if you already have had the flu this year, you can still get vaccinated because the flu virus can protect against more than one strain of flu. 
So you might have been infected by one strain, but you could also get a different infection with a different strain. That would suck. Yeah, that's really unfortunate. (laughs) So it might still be worth to get the vaccine, even if you've already had the flu, which I didn't really know, but just to be safe, because you don't want to get it again. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be right back and continue talking about the flu. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the Health and Wellness Podcast. We are continuing to talk about the flu. I want to touch on how the flu is treated. Uh, Usually, if you have the flu, you don't really need more than like bed rest. You also want to make sure you're taking in plenty of fluids to treat it because also you might have a fever, so you could be sweating it out. You don't know. But it's important to rest. In some cases, your doctor might prescribe an antiviral medication. Uh, Apparently, antiviral medications can have side effects. They could... You make, they could make you nauseous, potentially vomiting. Then this, you would have the flu, even though you think, yeah, sorry. Oh, yes, then you would have the <laughs> flu, not necessarily the stomach flu. Right. It could just be your medication, which would be terribly confusing and yeah. just would really suck. Also wrong. You have the area oh, of the yes. flu and then, oh, good, now I'm throwing up. Oh, that's terrible. The side effects could be lessened if, you're, if the medication is taken with the food. Mm-hmm. Also, there are some home remedies that, I don't know if I'd really say they're home remedies. They're just things that you should probably do when you're sick. So that you could do at home. So they're, yeah, they're, home they're good. So if you have the flu, uh, it may help ease your symptoms to, again, drink plenty of liquids. You probably want to be drinking water, potentially uh, juice and warm soups. And that is all to prevent dehydration. Also, when you're sick, it's also just really comforting to drink warm soup. Mm-hmm. It's nice. It feels nice going down your sore, sore throat. Yeah, it really does. It's important to rest. Make sure you're sleeping. Uh, that can help your immune system f- in fight infection. Uh, Sleep is really important in general, but especially when you're sick. You can also consider pain relievers, like over-the-counter things like acetaminophen, which is like Tylenol, other things, ibuprofen, like Advil, Motrin, and that can combat the achiness often associated with the flu. Uh, However, I learned this recently. Apparently, you want to use caution when you're using aspirin, Mm -hmm. like if you're giving it uh, to children or teens. Yes. Because there's the risk of... What, how do you say that? Rise, Rise syndrome. Rise syndrome? Mm-hmm. I had no idea about really? that. Yeah. I, I, for some reason, I knew this as a child. My mother would, I don't know, maybe she was always into the education. She's like, you get Tylenol because you can't have aspirin. Why? And then she told us. Oh, that makes sense. Because I was never given aspirin as a kid and never really understood why. Mm. I think for the first time in my life, I recently bought aspirin. And I was like, I wonder why I never took this. Yeah. But now I know because my parents probably didn't want to give me uh, Rise syndrome, which is a rare but potentially fatal condition. Yeah. Which, yeah, I'm, I don't know. Interesting. Just avoid that. Yeah. So be careful. If you have kids, don't give them aspirin. Just give them a different pain medication if they need it. And I think it can also help with the fever because you might have a fever if you have the flu and the general achiness and whatnot. Yes. The general terrible feeling. <laughs> Um, Also, to help control the spread of influenza, you should really stay home. Uh, Sick kids should stay home. And um, you should stay indoors and away from public until your fever has been gone for 24 hours. Just to make sure you don't have it anymore. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because, again, you don't want to spread it to other people. And anyone who's taking care of you 
you want to be careful. Anyone should, again, anyone who's taking care of you should wash their hands. You should wash your hands if you have the flu. Try to stay away from other people if you can. Don't have big parties. Yeah. Yeah, it's important. Don't wipe your nose on your hand and then go touch stuff. No, please don't. Just stay in bed. Just rest. Have other people give you liquids. You know, take it easy. Yeah. In general, it's flu season, so wash your hands. And honestly, I just feel like you should stay away from anyone who seems sick. I think generally stay away from children because they don't know how to deal with sickness. <laughs> I generally stay away from children stay anyway. Away from children. <laughs> I feel like they're just going to be really sick and they're not going to know how to wash their hands or clean themselves or not cough on you. They, they, they learn young how to, you know, cough into their elbow, but that also doesn't mean that they're not going to wipe their nose on your shirt. Yeah. I've had that experience. Yeah. Or when they just like are excited to see you and then they touch you and their hands are sticky and gross. And mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And, and then touch they... your face and they have no sense of personal space. No, they don't. Yeah. So anyway, be careful. If you're sick, stay at home, rest up. Uh, if other people around you seem sick, maybe just, you know, work from home if you can <laughs> or encourage your friend to go home because they seem sick. Uh, and in general, PSA, just don't get the flu because it sucks. Yep. Try and avoid it. I don't suggest it. And um, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of flu season. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy the holiday. <laughs> and a sort of compliment, not that compliment, whatever that was. Please be careful. <laughs> and that brings us to the end of the episode. Thank you all so much for joining. And uh, please tune in to the next health and wellness podcast. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Health and Wellness Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program